SVS is a very restless company. We're restless in our desire to bring reference experiences to more people by bringing groundbreaking performance to price points and price ranges where they've never been. So when our 16 Ultra subwoofers, our previous flagship range, uh, were finally finalized, they had so many new innovations in them, um, one would think we sort of sat back and said, okay, great, fantastic accomplishment, but actually Smith and his team immediately started thinking about how can we push the envelope and improve that performance. And that was a multi-year process. And now we have 17 Ultra Revolution subwoofers, which uh, I'm proud to say are the finest subwoofers SVS has ever brought to the world. Uh, and I'd like to say they're in the conversation with the finest subwoofers ever presented to consumers, period. 17 Ultra Revolution is a complete departure from the previous uh, 16 Ultra series. This is not to say anything negative about 16 Ultra. It's more along the lines of saying, when SVS does a new product launch, we don't do a refresh of the old product launch. We do a complete reimagining of what is possible. And that's what we want to tell you about today. So when we talk about 17 Ultra Revolution subwoofers, the obvious first place to start is uh, the, the all new 17 inch driver. But Smith, the 17 inch driver is not a 17 inch version of our 16 inch driver from 16 Ultra, right? It's completely reimagined. Yeah, it was a total ground up reinvention of the, uh, of the driver that we needed for this system. So when we, when we set out to reinvent what we believe is a flagship subwoofer, uh, we kind of ran into boundaries. We ran into the, the laws of physics, basically, of how are we going to get more SBL, deeper extension. Um, without sacrificing control. Right? Without sacrificing anything, yeah. So we, start, we started rebuilding this new flagship driver around an, a dual 8-inch voice coil. And so what that means is there's actually two, two voice coils wound together, what's called a bifiler, around an 8-inch voice coil. And that 8-inch voice coil gives us tons of control, uh, linear excursion, and that is what works in, in symphony with this new amplifier. The new amplifier is a dual mono design. So, so you have a dual mono amplifier, meaning an amplifier on each of the voice coils in the dual voice coil design. Has that ever even been done in a consumer product? There's never been an amp more powerful than this in a consumer audio subwoofer. Yeah, I'm incredibly proud of what we've accomplished with this amplifier. The dual mono design is, is something that um, allows us to drive both voice coils in the, in the motor. So this was really designed in symphony with the driver. And so the dual mono design is actually two totally independent, discrete, uh, class D MOSFET output amplifier modules. And each one is outputting to each voice coil in the driver. It's actually a four channel amplifier and right. those are bridged into two mono blocks. So we have four discrete output stages. We've got two bridged amps, each one driving a separate voice coil. That's right. And what, can you guys help me understand why did we do it that way? So the best reason is that this became a vehicle for us to deliver just tremendous power into the single driver. That's why we talk about this thing as a system. The driver and the amplifier, the dual mono design, the dual voice coil, all of these things were, were developed and, and kind of born from each other together as a symphony. One of the reasons why we didn't do a 17 inch driver in the first place was that there are issues with a larger driver uh, in terms of flex, in Correct. terms of cr uh, being able to control it. And we've solved those problems with this uh, massive motor and all new dual voice coil design. Fair to say? Yes. When, when you step up in driver size, you start seeing cone flex. When you're controlling it from a small voice coil, we, we stepped up the voice coil to eight inches. We eliminate the cone flex. And it's a dual voice coil. Correct. Dual voice coil. We're pushing on the coil, pushing on the cone in the middle of it. Let way less cone flex, better cone control, lower breakup modes lower distortion. And we have not seen this in a consumer subwoofer no. before. Unprecedented. So there's a lot of unprecedented, sophisticated innovations, both in the driver and the amplifier. But what makes it all work is the most sophisticated DSP we've ever had. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, we're using an analog devices DSP. It is a 295 megahertz DSP. That is almost, That's the most processing power we've ever had, right? It's, it's actually more than five times more powerful than the last one we've six used. Six times. Ever. It's almost six, yeah. yeah. So this really unlocked just a, a whole world of amplifier development that wasn't really possible before. It allows the amplifier to always deliver the maximum power to the driver. It always manages the power supply, it manages the whole system, and unlocks a bunch of new features in the amplifier, including the auto room correction. And the other piece of it, I believe, as we're going to talk about the power supply in a minute, is it comes up against what's possible in a normal household circuit and doesn't stress that out at all, right? Pretty much works with any household circuit anywhere in the country or in the world. Absolutely. The power supply is very intolerant of AC power. It makes full power over a wide range of AC voltages, and you can use it anywhere in the world and, and expect peak performance. So you're saying the subwoofer can perform at its best regardless of what goes into it voltage-wise? Yes, that's a function of, of the DSP and also some of the features we've built into the power supply itself. And the power supply actually has its own line conditioner. That's right. right. Is that fair to say? Yes, line conditioning. It cleans up the voltage. It eliminates distortion. It eliminates any RFI that's in the, in the signal. You get a very clean, pure voltage on the backside of the line conditioner. You know, I, I've been living with the 17 Ultra Revolution sealed box and ported box models for months now. And the effortless low frequency extension is amazing because it, it provides this sort of palpable pressure and thickness and solidity in the room that I've never experienced before. And that's and you've a, experienced a lot of subwoofers. I'm, I'm pretty jaded, and I actually called Gary at one point and I said, this is amazing, it's next level, it's incredible. The amount of low frequency energy we can deliver into the room in such a controlled manner. I've never experienced anything like that before. One of the hallmarks of SVS subwoofer design is we're not trying to win a tractor pull of low frequency extension and uh, output. Our subwoofers do that, but the, the really core mission is to be accurate and true to the content. And that really boils down to accurate frequency response and speed in transient response, otherwise known as maybe musicality. Can you help me with that? You know, massive output is nothing without precise control. And that's where you talk about the tractor pull mentality. We have massive output, but we also have incredible control over the driver and the system, and that provides us with the texture, the nuance, the transient response, the ability to stop and start on a dime, scale up dynamics. All of that gives you that realistic presentation, and, and it's like you're there and it's live, instead of uncontrolled output. And a lot of that comes from what we've developed in just not just the motor and not just the dual, the the dual mono block amplifier, but also the DSP. All of these things work together to maintain that frequency response and, and to maintain the control over the driver at all playback levels. You know, we always say our subwoofers are an ecosystem, or a subwoofer is an ecosystem, uh, because there's different parts and they're working together. But I don't think it's ever been more true than with the 17 Ultra Revolution. You guys really, it's almost a symphony of the parts all working together. It's that synergistic system where the, the hole's greater than the sum of the parts. And we have, for the first time ever in an SVS subwoofer, auto room EQ. Yeah, you talk about frequency response, and, and we have perfect frequency response in a quasi-anechoic environment. And we achieve that with the DSP. But when you stick the subwoofer in a room, you're dealing with room acoustics, standing waves, peaks and nulls, and those are challenges that present... Uh, problems to achieving a perfect frequency response in room, and that's where the auto EQ system comes in. So there's a lot of sophistication in this uh, auto room EQ, but it's also super easy, right? It's woven into our existing, very popular subwoofer control app, and it's totally automatic, right? It, it, it first, yes, it's very sophisticated. There's a huge amount of processing power and filtration that we can achieve with the auto EQ, but it's super easy to use for the end user. 
So another challenge is the person's room that the subwoofer is going into. And I know we said to ourselves, we, we really wanted to create this massive improvement in our performance without an increase in size of the cabinet. And we did it. Yeah, it, it was a, a very unique layer of complexity on the system to add more woofer, more power, more processing power, greater extension, higher SPL output, but let's not make the box any bigger. And so we were able to achieve that. We were pushing the envelope of what was possible in any subwoofer with the previous series, and we came up against really the laws of physics with 17 Ultra Revolution, and it's a triumph. I compliment our engineering team, um, and I'm really, really excited to bring 17 Ultra Revolution subwoofers to the world. Thanks.